Shall we start, Dr. Dubey? Yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay, so uh, hello and welcome everyone to the Be Wastewise uh, webinar of the month. I am Akanksha Singh. I'm the community builder at uh, Be Wastewise. Uh, as you know, Be Wastewise is a nonprofit organization addressing the need for knowledge dissemination on waste management since 2013. And we organize webinars with global audience panelists and moderators. Uh, today's topic for the webinar is uh, construction and de demolition uh, waste in India, challenges and way forward. And today's session is being moderated by Dr. Rajesh Kumar Dube, who's a renowned name in the industry and is a professor for integrated waste management and sustainable engineering and the chair of School of Water Resources IIT Kharagpur. Dr. Dube has more than a decade of research, teaching and industrial outreach experience in the areas of integrated solid and hazardous waste management, groundwater and service surface water quality issues associated with environmental contaminants, including those from the waste disposable sites. Mr. Dube, uh, Professor Dube has been moderating our webinars for more than two years now. And today, Dr. Dube is going to talk to two very learned experts from the industry. Dr. Sudhir Kumar Burai, he is a director and senior professor of civil engineering at Bits Pilani, Rajasthan, and also a professor in the Department of Civil Engineering at IIT Kharagpur. He was Erskine Visiting Fellow at University of Canterbury, New Zealand, a visiting scientist at National University of Singapore, and also a recipient of the Boycast Fellowship and visited the Department of Civil Environment Eng Engineering in USA as well. Our, our second speaker for today's session is uh, Mr. Pradeep Khandelwal. Uh, he's having more than 38 years of experience in the industry and has recently retired as Chief Engineer in East Delhi Municipal Cooperation, erstwhile Municipal Cooperation of Delhi. Before we further proceed uh, to the discussion, we would request you all to know that this workshop is being recorded and will be uploaded on the Be Waste Wise uh, website and also on our YouTube channel. I've uh, used the Q&A section for your questions to the panel and you would like to introduce yourself where you are from and you have any queries or you are uh, trying to have any comments for the panel, you can use the chat function. Over to you, Dr. Dubey. Thank you. Thank you, Akansha, and welcome all uh, uh, to this webinar. As Akansha mentioned, we are going to talk about construction and demolition waste management and what are the challenges and way forward, especially from the Indian context. And of course, when we talk about India, we talk about some other countries as well. So uh, as uh, you heard, we have two esteemed panelists with us. So without further any delay, uh, I'll request uh, our first panelist, uh, uh, Dr. Barai, uh, uh, who's uh, director at Beats Milani, to kindly share his initial thought on this topic. And so Professor Parai, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, just one second, uh, uh, can you just, uh, let me just share my screen. Sure. And uh, give me one minute time and okay, here we are. Uh, please just let me know if the screen is visible and then I it can is. start. It is okay. visible. Thank you, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Dubey and uh, Akansha, uh, for inviting me to be part of this elite panel uh, with uh, Mr. Pradeep Khandelwal uh, for the Be Waste Wise, and particularly the subject which is very close to my heart of CND waste utilization. And particularly, we are looking at from the Indian context and where we are and where we want to go from here. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, uh, discussion going to be in this. Uh... So let me just start very quickly. Uh, Everyone knows about it that in India, we are talking about uh, creating the smart cities and more than 100 cities has to be created in a smart uh, city. But the moment we talk about the smart cities, we need to look for a smart solutions. And the smart solution means it is a specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely solution. If you see this picture very carefully, in that I have circled one particular segment, which is actually one of the key parameter which is required for a smart cities be it talking about the technological solutions or looking at the renewable energy, including uh, increasing, making the intelligent transport system, um, safety, structural health monitoring, et cetera. But one of the important thing is that the waste management and waste management of any form, this is the most critical aspect of it because it has direct implications with the life of the individuals along with the any part of the smart cities. Now, having said that, 
let us get focused on the today's uh, panel discussion part. So what we want to look at is that recently it has been uh, said in the one of the articles that the global construction and demolition waste, basically, which is in a recycle market where we can have an opportunity forecast by 2020-27, is that going to be almost like a 149.2 billion by 2027. It's a huge, basically, business out there, and it is growing at a very rapid rate at 2.7% from like 20 to 27. Having said this, a global picture of that, the picture itself is kind of gives an indication that we need to deal uh, with a large number of construction demolition waste. Before we go into that, uh, it is also important that what do I really mean by construction and demolition waste? So we, we need to understand. So there are one kind of uh, the CND waste would be what we call excavation soil. Another could be roadwork waste. Another could be demolition waste and the complex waste or whatever it is, the waste which comes from the different sources. What we are going to talk specifically to mostly about the demolition waste, this is where we want to focus to, for our discussion. So when we look at the CND waste, you will find that the large number of uh, CND waste, which is included, is concrete. Uh, it is also the brick and machinery, and of course the soil. So the large chunk of like 23%, which has been taken by the concrete, and 31% is almost uh, uh, for the brick and machinery, and 36% of this is soil, sand, and gravel. So this large chunk has to be handled, and this composition in Indian context, according to the CPCB 2017 report, it indicates that we have a huge problem on hand. And how are we addressing at this point of time? How are we looking at this problem? So to give you a little idea from a background point of view, we are only actually recycling 1% of the total CND waste. So you can understand there's a huge problem in front of us. At the same time, 150 million tons of CND is actually generated annually. And unofficially, if you look at the number, it is three to five times. This is something which is a big number, which is there in front of us. And country has a capacity to only about 6,500 tons per day. It's just a 1.3% what we are actually utilizing it or recycling it. 2017, it was said that around 53 countries would, I'm sorry, 53 the cities would be actually expected to set up the whole recycling plant. But what is this real scenario? Only 13, 13 cities in India has been done till today. So the speed at which we need to really work, it is, it is very, very essential. And of course, there are no uniformity in terms of uh, quantifying, characterizing the CND waste. Whenever there is a mention of this, uh, the, the CND waste uh, utilization or the solid waste uh, well-maintained, the uh, indoor city names comes first because everybody talks about it's a very well-maintained city and so on and all that. Now, CND waste utilization from infrastructure development points of view, it looks very really non-starter. And I'm sure um, Mr. Kandelwal, who is going to highlight in the context of a Delhi. So Delhi Metro is actually the port phase uh, is the only good practice. And when you say good practice means start till end, it's like the to the you are looking for a complete life cycle point of view. 33% of the uh, uh, waste generation, which is can be avoided, which actually can be done very easily, but architects design and some kind of uh, the waste mitigation practices which are not followed at pre-construction stage, this is becoming an one more hindrance. And according to like a Swatch uh, Survection 2021, we need to push for the right design of a segregations collections, recycling, and reusing this one. So these are the some of the basic problem which are there on hand. In terms of the generic uh, uh, challenges, like we need to have the robust estimation methodologies for CND waste. We need to find the land for collections and recycling. This is also another huge problem we have. And once we define the problem, then possibly we look for the solutions in a better way. Collection and transport of CND waste. It's also very important. You cannot have uh, the, the landfills at the different locations, but at the same time, the transportation also has to be optimized because it also has a carbon footprint in the air pollution. So this is something which we need to look at it. And the, there is also a con, uh, concerns about the finances and business cases. Like there is always a support system required from financial institutions to support this kind of uh, waste utilization. And of course, it has been found that there is a low involvement from the state government and agencies and departments. Uh, there is a lukewarm responses from the construction industry. And that is one of the reasons uh, the DST report earlier said, I think it was 2010 or so, that actually it is about the lack of awareness. It is not about the, the people knowing it. So we need to bring in a lot of scientific insight along with the practical knowledge on the field, people who have been dealing uh, with the day-to-day -day life of the, the CND waste utilization. So that is something which we have to look at. It. 
the pricing of this recycle aggregate products also is very very important cng waste based product also very important sometimes people have a little apprehension of using the recycle thing the, like buying the car new one or you buy the cx second hand car always there is a uh, there is a thought processes but then i think we need to look for the better and uh, uh, confidence building uh, measure we have to take it so that the people go for the cng waste based product as also there are a lot of informal sectors are involved which we don't even look at it well, many times you must have seen in solid waste the people looking for a plastic bottles and plastic materials to recycle it in different way but they are very informal sector we need to look after them as well demolition management this is very important because any building which is demolished we need to make sure that it is again so there are many other issues which is actually makes it very generic now coming to the more of the the my personal experiences and the the research activity which i do from that point of view i find it that the i focus mostly on the the, the aggregates or construction uh, uh, material which is major percent uh, 70% of the concrete which it become becomes we need to really look for the alternate way of the recycling of the construction demolition based recycle aggregates and that is something where which is very important as per the indian code of practice this is the only provision which has been given says that ist 383 uh, from the recycle aggregate, whether it's a coarse aggregate or a fine aggregate, it just says that 100% for the lean concrete means it's a the application is very low end. 20% is allowed up to uh, in a plain concrete, and only 25% reinforced concrete is actually allowed. Now, what happens to 75%? And this is something where it is going to create again a huge impact because we will have to look for the the natural aggregates there. So there is a need actually at this point of time that how do we really convert this whole exercise into a 100% utilization of the CND uh, waste-based recycle aggregate. For that, actually, we uh, have to understand what are the challenges are there for those recycle aggregates. So whenever you look at the natural aggregate or we call virgin aggregate versus the recycle aggregate, the performance actually is very well documented that it is not going to give exactly the same performance which is expected uh, from the the natural aggregates, and that is where the the uh, uh, this is very well uh, documented, and that is why we need to do a, some very detailed research and to find out how do we really go forward. To do this, we need to really come out with the 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 standard concrete technology point of view that you understand from the material characterization point of view, you understand from the mixed proportioning point of view, you look from the performance point of view, and at the end, it is an application. This is something what we want to really look at it. This completes the whole cycle of reusing the complete the uh, CND waste. And this is something particularly I'm talking from the uh, coarse aggregate or a fine aggregate point of view. And this is something where uh, the, the, the academic institutions and r and institution can contribute uh, immensely. Having said this about the, the, the CND waste-based uh, uh, concrete technology, now what are our recommendations? If suppose you want to really go forward, there is a close, collaboration between the, the field along with the academic and R&D institution is very, very important. And that is why we need to have a policy in place of robust estimation of a CND waste. We need to characterize this is what actually it can happen because every, every waste which is coming out from uh, the construction demolition waste site, it is of a different categories. So how do we really categorize them? We need to do the land, land identification because that is also another problem which we are we want to avoid it. And in fact, the, the, it's very interesting that I think some of the European countries, they charge, the, they make the people to pay the taxes to reduce the, uh, the, the waste. Because if the, if the CND waste goes to the landfill, then you have to pay taxes for that. So how do you really recycle it as much as you can? And that is where it, 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 one can come out with the, the locations in which this can be then transportation system should be very, very structured. And there should be a proper governing fact, uh, framework which has to be provided. Now, as a responsibility of the construction industry, it should be made sure that they always use some part of the CND waste into the in, into the regular constructions, what is happening. And of course, we need to learn a lot of lessons from the global practices. Many of the international uh, countries have uh, started using the CND waste very successfully. The great story is the London Olympic uh, 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 village, which was actually made of a recycled aggregate, which was that. So these are very interesting examples are there. And... Uh, we need to build the confidence in the people that, okay, these products are worth using it. And that is the way forward. We need, we'll have to bring in a lot of awareness about it, take care of the informal sector, as I mentioned earlier. And we, of course, have to uh, go for adopting the mandatory 
uh, demolition management strategies. And this is also a very important part of it. One of the most important thing is the dust control, of course, because whenever there is a demolition uh, exercise happens and everybody knows about it, the, the one of the building which was demolished very recently in, in Delhi, uh, and it was so much of this, uh, the, the, the talk was there and the dust control and so on. So you can see that the, there are a lot of challenges comes up uh, during, the, uh, during this time. Uh, this is actually just a comprehensive uh, way I presented the different things which is possible. Uh, I'll just close it with just making the statement about it that the, we have done some uh, some exercise and one of the books which actually talks about the middle path of it is basically systematic approach from characterization to uh, creating the, the, the elements which could be used as a concrete aggregate. But of course, we need to do more actually where uh, we will be able to create more sustainable uh, way of uh, taking care of various aspects of it. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much. I think I, I, I'll close it here and then maybe I'll, I'll be very happy to take the questions at the later part. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bare, for a very good overview uh, presentation and some of the insights from your research work in this area. So now we will, from the academic, uh, we'll, we'll move to a practitioner who has been working on field for last 30 years, uh, trying to set up CND waste management facilities in India. And he had actually uh, he was in charge of the CND Waste Management Facility in, in Delhi, and under his leadership, it was uh, constructed and managed. So, uh, Mr. Khandelwal, uh, its uh, floor is yours. Uh, we'd like to learn the the ground or how to make it happening on the ground. So, uh, so please uh, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, now, let me share my screen. Uh, Is it visible? Uh, not yet. Uh, it should be coming. Just hold on. Akansha, you have to make him to sh allow him to share. No, no. I have already. Yeah, yeah. Already there. So while uh, Mr. Kandelwal is uh, setting it up, so if you have any question, uh, the participants, please go ahead and put it on uh, uh, the Q&A section. We'll be happy to take it after Mr. Kandelwal's uh, presentation. So, okay. Yep, there is, uh, good, it has started coming. Yeah, so you can put it on slideshow. It's okay now? Yeah, pretty good. So again, good evening. Uh, my talk will be on the practical point of view, not <laughs> technical as Professor Sudhir has told us. So what we did is, if you see the construction industry, which is growing very fast in India. And is, it is expected that uh, over 9,000 billion economy will cross this thing. And for this construction industry, the main ingredients or main components are the uh, soils and aggregates and other things. And uh, we, in India, most of the cities are facing shortage of these materials. So, uh, so uh, facing these materials, so we need these materials anyhow. Government is also pressing hard for the recycling, circular economy, and all those things. So, CND processing of CND waste is the only alternative, in my opinion. We have to save the natural resources. We have to uh, process uh, the CND waste so that we can save the land also for disposal. And in Delhi, we are generating around 6,500 6, metric ton per day. Uh, as per the latest report of uh, Niti Ayog, the sand, soil, and stone aggregates in enormous quantity. And if we uh, process the complete demolition waste, complete construction demolition, then only 5% demand can be met out from this. As Professor Sujir already told, we are processing even less than 1%. So, 
the uh, how to estimate the cnd waste is a no doubt very tedious no formula is available with us in 2000 way back in 2000 tifec has did one study where they said for the new construction uh, it's around 40 to 50 kg per square meter for reconstruction it is 400 to 500 kg per square meter on that basis we have started estimating wherever reconstruction re, uh, redevelopment is taking place so this quantity is coming almost true so now uh, from 2000 onwards uh, the codes have changed the method of uh, uh, construction has changed so we need to revisit this uh, formula of uh, generation uh, basically in cnd waste in delhi or in other places but wherever i have seen mainly concrete uh, plaster uh, soil sand broken bricks etc are found no other material like plastic, metal, or steel is available in the CND waste. So we have to focus in this only. And in the, in the CND waste, what we are getting is more than 70% is a sand and soil mix. Very rare quantity of concrete and the bricks. Uh, okay. What Delhi has started in doing this thing is a uh, in 2005 we thought to have a CND waste management plant, and till then we have processed more than 8.5 million tons of CND waste. On the success of Delhi, the government of uh, India MOUHA has mandatory asked all the local bodies to have the CND waste management plant. Uh, for 1 million cities, having population 1 million cities. Uh, in the processing, what we can process is more than 95% of CND waste we can process and we can get the recyclables from there. From this CND waste, what we, we are getting is there are four components, aggregates, concrete aggregates, sand, and soil. These four aggregates we are segregating entirely. Uh, from 2005 onwards, when we started thinking of CND waste facility, first facility was installed in 2009. And from then, a lot of studies has already been carried out by different departments and these things. Uh, even uh, uh, MOEF has circulated the CND waste management rule in 2016. Uh, as a professor uh, already told that DIS has incorporated use of recycled aggregates only in 2016. Whereas my plant was working in from 2009 onwards, lot of, from a lot of persuasion from our side, then DIS incorporated in 2016. Thereafter, the CPWD has incorporated in their specifications and their rules. Uh, analysis items and issued the circular time to time. In Delhi also we face a lot of problems for using the recycle agreement. Every department was forced to use this depart, uh, recycle aggregates. And accordingly the NBCC, the DDA, the Urban Development Department, PWD, even EDMC has issued circular to mandatory use of recycle aggregates, recycle products of CND waste. As far as Delhi is concerned, now Delhi has a five facilities as present. And we are processing over 5,500 metric tons. The system is we are identified local collection points of CND waste. From there, we collect it, transport it to the processing facility, and then we process it. These are the locations of five different plants in Delhi, all around the corners. So we are processing it at this thing. And uh, so the uh, state of art plant is at Sastri Park, 
where in a very small piece of land, we are processing, we have started from 500, now we are processing 1000 TPD per day. Uh, the, this is a Gurari plant, which we have started first in 2009 with 500 TPD. Now it is processing it 2000 TPD. Uh, this is a Rani Khera plant. This was started recently uh, for 1000 TPD. Uh, this is a, a Murtaka plant uh, where this uh, DMRC has installed this plant because the Professor Sudhir was telling that in 2021 onwards, um, Delhi Metro has started uh, complete recycling. So this, this plant was installed by DMRC, Delhi Metro. And this is the last plant in Bakkarwala where we have a thousand TPD capacity. So this is the total scenario of the plants in Delhi and all the plants are functioning very well. The only issue which we are facing is the uh, use of recycled aggregates. So what we did it, we, uh, our tender or our concessioner collect the CND waste from the designated points, transport it to the uh, facility. There we wait and then process it. The process is in two category, dry processing as well as the wet processing. And from the wet, pro uh, both the processing, we get recycle concrete aggregate separately. We get recycle aggregate separately. We get the manufacture sand and soil. From these recycle material, we have started making value added product like curb stone, floor tiles, wall tiles, and uh, concrete blocks and all those things we are making with this. The, here I will, uh, this is the complete process. Uh, we are using it and we are getting all these materials. And now from the analysis of these processing, what we get, if we have a hundred unit of the waste, then 50% is the loose soil, 5% is RCA. RCA is from the concrete aggregates, recycled concrete aggregate. RA is a recycled aggregate having mix of concrete, bricks and other things also, stones. We are getting 15% manufacture sand and 1% other material. This is, you can see the uh, picture from this thing, how the uh, mixed waste is coming and aggregate, different, different size of aggregates, we are getting it. Uh, this is the value added product from the recycled material. The floor tiles, the paver tiles, the uh, curved stones, brick block, etc. And uh, uh, Professor was, uh, was also telling about the price. So price are comparable, not very high or not very uh, less. Uh, these are the good examples using recycled uh, material, uh, Supreme Court building, Ex, um, and this expressway, uh, Karwala to DD expressway, MP flats, biodiversity park, Delhi University college. Uh, now the last point, we are, what are the challenges we are facing it? So as professor has already told, the awareness about the recycling of CND waste. This is the uh, foremost uh, problem. Even we engineers, wherever, wherever I go, they are not aware of that this can be recycled or the recycled material can be used. Though the rule has come in 2016, lot of publications has already come. But even then, even among the engineers, as well as the other stakeholders, like builder, contractor, architect, supervisors, they are not aware of uh, CN, uh, importance of CND waste and their recycling. Uh, quantification and estimation, we have already told. The quality of recycled product. Uh, uh, Professor Sudhir has already told that we have to analyze the institutions like uh, educational institutions and R&D institution must work on how the quality of the product, final product, can be improved 
by using this recycle aggregates. The uh, our contractors or engineers at field time uh, time to time complained about the quality of this thing. So we were telling them that as per the code also, it is a mix of 20 and 80. We have to use 80% virgin material and 20% recycled material, then use it. What people are doing it, what engineers are at the contractors are doing it, 80% work they are doing with the virgin material and 20% work they are doing with the recycled material. Then difference can be visible. To avoid that difference, we have to mix first and then use it. Processing technologies need to be improved. The advancement, many advancements are already taken place from 2009 to 2016 plant. We have changed four changes in the technology. Still, there is a scope to have good, better quality of this thing. Regulations, despite all the circulars, despite all the incorporation in the BIS, incorporation in the CPWD specification, people are not using it. The enforcement both in the government department as, as, as well as in the private department. Cost, and the last one is the demand and supply. If we issue a circular that use at least 20% of the recycled material, then that much production is not there. That much processing is not there. So we have to match the demand and supply both. Uh, what are the way forward? we have to make a seamless integration from demolition to the processing. Where, wherever there is a gap in between, so it will not be processed. Uh, in, uh, when I went to the Denmark where I saw the uh, uh, contractor who is demolishing the building is transporting the waste to the processing plant and he, is, he himself is owning the uh, recycled plant. So that uh, seamless integration is must. IEC activity we have already told. Incentive to waste generator for sale of CND waste as well as concession on purchase of the recycled material. That is very important. And for the private operators, what we can give to make maximum use of recycled material, we can give them tax rebate in the value added product there is a fight, still some fight among the among us uh, with GST that from the flyers recycle product, the GST is 5%. For the uh, CND waste recycle product, the GST is 18%. So that difference is also one of the problem, one of the challenge. Uh, either we can give the rebate in the form of enhanced FAR. We can give the rebate in the form of building fee. We can also give, if people are using the uh, CND waste product, then we can give extra weightage in the green building rating. Uh, so that we can improve the uh, CND waste, Re use of recycled CND waste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kandelwal, with all the practical insights uh, that you have, uh, uh, you're sharing your experience for the last almost three decades of working in this field. So thank you very much. Uh, so we will uh, get to the questions. Uh, I see there are quite a few questions and many of those was already, uh, Professor Barai has answered them uh, on the uh, on the live while uh, it was going on. So uh, one of the questions which is, uh, it's from the Northeast, it says that, which is kind of true for other places in India too. They say that there is a big challenge in, in the Northeastern region of the country is non-availability of data on amount of CND waste generated and uh, like a quantity as well as quality, which is kind of true for, throughout India and many, many countries. So how do I, I like uh, he's asking, he's an auditor. So he's asking as an auditor, how we can estimate or quantify. So I think you talked about the tie fact but if you can elaborate it slightly more on that, uh, like how can say a state like West Bengal, for example, I'm sitting in West Bengal or Rajasthan or any state, how we should go about quantifying how much CND waste is produced and what is there in the CND waste? Uh, uh, as you know that uh, um, uh, 
TNT waste management rule has a clear format and that is given the responsibility to the uh, uh, local urban local bodies to have all information about the construction and demolition. See, one way is when we are sanctioning the uh, building plan, we get to know either it is a new building or it is a uh, reconstruction of the building. And using the formula of uh, uh, this uh, TIFEC, we can estimate from the for the building purposes. Whereas other infrastructure development projects, how can we uh, estimate? So that per square feet is the per square meter is the only parameter for new uh, infrastructure development. We will use that formula, and for the uh, reconstruction of the infrastructure, lo lot of bridges, lot of uh, industries are the, we are reconstructing it. Then we can use that formula. The only way is TIFEC study, and we will use. And as per the uh, uh, this thing, CMD waste management rule, it is mandatory. And all the ULBs are filing report to the uh, pollution control board or the central pollution control board, the generation quantification. Mm -hmm. So other question is on uh, public control. So Barry, you can uh, talk about the tools. graphene used in construction industry. Like, uh, I think uh, graphene is used in cement and something, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Please. Yeah, I'm, I'm not much aware about it because I never dealt with this uh, kind of mm -hmm. uses, but I think uh, there will be definitely literature available of the graphene. Yeah, I just did, did a quick Google search and I found that graphene is used in cement, some of the cements and some uh, corrosive, anti-corrosive material and all that. Okay. Does use it too, so, so that was there. And uh, in terms of, there were many of the questions you have already answered uh, on uh, through there. Uh, is that, yeah, here this talks about Dr. Majumdar is talking about uh, so what he did not find in the presentation is the linkage to sustainability in terms of sustainable construction, SDGs and green buildings, embodied carbon. So would any faculty like to respond? So if Professor Bari, if you want to respond to that, and then I can add it to whatever you have to say. Oh, yeah. So I think we've, uh, what he's uh, trying to highlight is that the, the question is that since the, everything is happening in a very discrete fashion, uh, and that is what exactly what uh, uh, Mr. Pradeep Khandelwal was also trying to highlight, the seamless connection. So what is happening is that everything is happening in a bits and pieces uh, in isolation. The time has come and enough uh, uh, literature and enough data is available internationally that we put them together and come out with the absolutely in align with the sustainability and SDGs point of view. And uh, uh, as you are aware about it, like even we have tried to do life cycle analysis and mm -hmm. looking at what is the carbon footprint it would be having and so on and all that. So I think what he said is that the uh, it's a very important point, no doubt about it in the presentation, though I try to put it from a concrete technology point of view, but there I have assumed that it is the, the, the materials are coming straight away from the plant and its closure is the application part of it. And that application needs to be scalable application. So the whole cycle has to get closed. And that is where I think the, the uh, a lot of people will have to come together uh, be it the, the, the policy makers, the, be it the, the solid waste management agencies, be it the state level, the district level, and all the national level, and on the side, one side, the, the, the builders, the construction industry people will have to come together with research institutions and the academic institutions. So I think there is, there is a, uh, you're, you're absolutely right, Dr. Majumdar, because uh, there is a need for doing this in context of India. Internationally, yeah. it has been successfully done, but in, in terms of in India, uh, we need to have that, um, uh, what I should say, the awareness and the confidence using the, the CND waste to the uh, construction industry. We have started working on uh, taking the carbon footprint, how we can reduce the carbon footprint by using this recycled material and all those things. Is not only uh, because the processing, is, it's because of the saving of the natural resources and extracting from the natural, uh, na from the uh, queries and other things, we are uh, using a lot of uh, and this thing, power and other things. So we, we can reduce the carbon fo footprint by using the recycle aggregate. Yeah, and just to add a little bit, uh, Dr. Majumdar, there is the IGPC is there, Indian Green, Green Building Council, and also CREDI. Uh, they do uh, do programs and uh, kind of activities in this particular area too. So. 
yes, we haven't kind of see in one particular webinar we cannot cover each and every aspect. So, but the IGBC and CREDI do that, and then I have participated in a couple of uh, their meetings where we talked about these aspects as well. So then uh, I think there was one gentleman who wanted to uh, share some thoughts. Uh, he was running some plant. Uh, Rajendra Kumar uh, Bagrodia, if you want to, yeah, just a yeah, few yeah. minutes, if you can take a couple of minutes and talk about what you wanted to speak, because we have so other questions there too. Rajendra Kumar, you can, I think, uh, you can allow, uh, Akancha, you can allow him to talk. Yes, give me just a minute. I'm doing it. He did uh, uh, CND waste processing at uh, one of the Delhi re redevelopment project. Wonderful. Okay, okay. So if you are there, I think you can unmute yes. yours. Yeah, it's connected. Yeah, can I speak? Sure, Go sure. Ahead. Hello. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I was running a plant in NBCC, uh, and at that time when I started the plant, there was nobody else, you know, who could uh, run it or had that kind of technology. As a matter of fact, I'm very happy meeting uh, uh, Dr. Dubey and Dr. Parai because I'm also from IIT Kharagpur. Oh, wonderful. And, and I passed out in 1966. <laughs> and then I was teaching engineering in Canada and uh, came back uh, in 1969. After that, I've been doing a lot of research work, you know, like even waste of roads, which you're talking about. Okay. I'm making a uh, very good material out of the waste of the roads and uh, uh, doing good work for portal repairs. And I guarantee 10 years of life with my material. Now, the most unfortunate thing about the CND waste, which of course, uh, I'm sh sharing also with Mr. Khandelwal because he was quite responsible at that time. Uh, you know, like, uh, I don't know, you know, even though I successfully ran that plant for three years, whenever I wanted to uh, put up this plant, uh, there was always an objection for reasons only known to them. They wanted to have a water technology, that it must be having water technology. I don't understand. Uh, that why they should insist just because there was a company in uh, Calcutta which was they had they were in league with him and you know like they wanted to use this technology so they were all the time saying because basically water is a very precious commodity I don't understand that why water should be used so much in quantity first to wet the uh, uh, entire waste waste and then dry it up. And drying it up also takes a lot of uh, energy, and uh, every uh, you know energy produced, like uh, you use use so much of uh, uh, you know like pollution you are uh, creating. So in what way is it a green technology of water? You see what the the tender should have been that you should be a pollution free uh, plant. You should put not that you should use water and you should use this and use that. So I was always a failure in trying to take up this technology further. And even now, you know, I want to do it in a big way. But, you know, I don't know. Uh, everywhere I, I go, nowadays, uh, different cities and different states, they have a tender and they are sitting over them and they don't decide. I don't know why. And uh, I'm very proud of at least one thing that I have worked a lot and I'm still doing. I have a big research lab and uh, whatever I do, I do with a lot of research work. So this one, this is what I wanted to put up in. in Thank this. you. Thank you. Uh, so I think um, Mr. Khandelwal wanted to Thank say you. something. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Sir, sir, I'm with you only. I'm not at this thing. And it is not a water technology. It is a wet, wet technology. Because to avoid the pol uh, air pollution. Because uh, IIT Kanpur has did, did the an, an analysis where he said ki, uh, the CND waste processing is causing the air pollution. PM10 and PM6.5, PM2.5. So we are not using, we are using. Uh, but sir, I, I ran the plant for three years and I had no problem with the pollution department. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, there will be. So we can yes, get sir. to the next question. Yeah. Just, yes, just uh, I would be happy to take the offline actually with Mr. Rajendra Kumar if you can. Do yeah, that. yeah. It's interesting yeah. to hear from his. Uh, yes. <laughs> 
And uh, so there are other questions, are there, but with some simple questions. I'll like, remain are... in touch with both of you, you know. Sure, sure. Please yes, please. yes. I'll, and you should come and visit us at Kharagpur. We'll be happy to <laughs> be here. To... So what are the options and possibilities to generate energy from construction wood waste? Uh, yes, so if it's uh, in India, actually, we don't get that much wood waste as, except maybe hilly areas. So, but mm -hmm. you can do, you can take that wood waste and do a uh, waste to energy as, as long as you have proper air pollution control system. So that can be taken care of. Then there is a, a question on uh, provide your views on establishing CNB waste processing plant for a smaller ULBs with CNB waste of 10 to 20 tons per day. Whether these plants are technically and financially feasible, can it be made in PPP, EPC or ONM, et cetera? So can Mr. Kandelwal, mm -hmm. So what, uh, we are recommending, yeah. Yeah. what we are recommending is the cluster waste, up, uh, waste approach. The 5-10 local bodies, nearby local bodies can make a 100 TPD plant instead of 10 and 20 TPD plant. And uh, um, the people are in process of decentralized processing plants also. Uh, mounted on a truck or something, this thing. So that uh, in situ processing can also be done. Okay. So, but that's it's a financially viable, isn't it? That's what you're saying. Yeah, financially viable. Yeah. So, no, what about the market? I, uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Just, just, I wanted to add. I think possibly the 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 participant who is he was given his name is anonymous, but yeah. I'm sure that he's he or she is looking for maybe a uh, maybe a startup model or something. And this yeah. is is an ecosystem where people are looking for very small scale solutions when scalable one. So, I'm that in that context maybe. And what I think Mr. Kandelwal said is that. Maybe the decentralized way is the right way forward, actually. So there is also a question on basically bigger, like this also, he's talking about just the toxic metal, but in general, chemical of concern. So these days we are using so much of different types of uh, uh, metals or uh, elements are there, or even organic chemicals. So whenever we do like disaster debris, if you like not only construction and demolition, but we go to disaster debris, everything gets mixed up. So, like, it, and I don't see any beneficial reuse risk assessment uh, practice in our CND waste industry. So, what, what are your thoughts on that? Either Professor Gorai or Professor uh, Mr. Kandelwal, you can take that. Like, to those different chemicals that we use in buildings, how they will impact uh, the quality of the recovered material. Yeah. So I think that this is a very uh, contamination in some form, which comes from a recycled material. Uh, this has been always all uh, a problem. So what we need to do is that before we really use it on a real practice, I think the characterization should happen at the recycling plant level itself. And that is the right spot because finally the product which comes out from the recycling plant should be the, the contamination free. Then only people will have a confidence in using that material. So I think the, the plant, I think in Delhi, whatever it was there, they were having a, some kind of a processes through which I think they were uh, doing it. I think Mr. Kandelwal can yeah. possibly. Uh, I have one paper with me, the detailed assessment of the technical properties of a recycled aggregates from the mixed CND waste. Mm -hmm. That was done by the uh, Norway, uh, one of the university in Norway, Christian J. Angelis. Mm -hmm. So from this report, because I'm not a, so technical people. So what we did is a six month study was done for all time of waste. Uh, during summer, during winter. So the samples were taken time to time and we don't find any toxicity in the material beyond permissible. Hmm. Okay. So this paper is available on the this thing. So you can go ahead with this. Okay, so then there are some uh, general comments here, uh, but I'll just go for uh, some uh, specific question. Uh, which is again, uh, recycling of any product will be only effective when it's a cost advantage over virgin material. So how to make it cost effective? Uh, so that's uh, the question is there. We, we see similar problem in other waste streams like plastic waste and others. Any idea about how to deal with that? So in my presentation, there is a one uh, slide on the cost uh, comparison. So if you go through the co cost comparison, it's a comparable, it's not costly. Even uh, five, five to ten percent cheaper. Mm -hmm. So okay, then we have this is Mr. Jagdish Machine has a 
comment that uh, only one percent is recycled, less ninety nine percent is disposed of. So how it is being done in an environmental sustainable manner? Of course, it is not done in an environmental sustainable manner. That's why we are having this webinar because we want to increase that from one percent to as high as possible. So right now they are essentially being dumped on any low lying area and all that. So that's the reason we are uh, talking about it. Then uh, Mr. Raghupati has a comment directly for you, Mr. Khandelwal. You can read that. I'm not going to read it online here. So uh, we talked about those. Uh, and then there is a general comment like all the existing 13 plants that we have, how effectively they are uh, functioning in India right now. Like uh, we had some plants which started and closed down as well, isn't it? So why the plants closed down? What are the problem? Uh, I can answer this. In Delhi, all the five plants are functioning very well. Now, it, uh, as on today is 100% efficiency. Whereas in other cities, where there is a land available, people mm -hmm. are used to dump the CND waste on roadside or low-lying area or open land. They are not bringing the waste to the plant. The enforcement is a one of the major mm -hmm. problems. Like in Indore, the plant is 100 TPD and getting only 50 TPD. Mm -hmm. Banaras is the same issue. Because they have a lot of land as well as the other things and uh, low enforcement. So it is more of a management issue, not the technical Manage issues. Uh, is, in the CND, recycling is only the management issue. So in your five plants, what is the financial model? Like how much you charge per ton to the ULB? Uh, here in Delhi, all the plants are on PPP mode. So okay. we are paying only, uh, department is paying only transportation fee and provided the land. Okay. And so, uh, the, all the machinery and uh, uh, operation costs are borne by this thing and whatever product they are getting, that they are they have a yes, liberty sir. to sell. Liberty to sell. So it was an island FS. The, yeah, the first mainly, plant was first plant was by the island FS. I don't know about that. All, four all out are. of five, all the uh, out of five, four are with island FS. Okay. One is with other agency. Okay. So I but did I, that uh, economic analysis also. Mm -hmm. uh, after six years, it is a buy one. Okay. Yeah, Professor Bare, you were saying. Oh, no, no, I just wanted to say I was a beneficiary of ILFS's uh, re re recycle aggregate. So, okay. I know that. <laughs> so it was a, uh, and it is very interesting actually because if it, I think it is made it scalable and all the, uh, the agencies, yeah. state and the, the district level agency owns it up, then I think it, it can turn out to be a very good business model. At the same time, it can have a very uh, huge benefits in terms of a better quality of environment in that surrounding. So I think it's a lot of work on, 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 on hand now. But it's, it's still a lot of research is required to be done on these recycled products. Mm -hmm. How it can be mixed, the percentage can be mixed so that the output is good. Good, yeah. So there is one CRI uh, is taking many times, okay. has taken samples many times, but has not come up with any idea. <laughs> So there's one question on, again, on financing part, the ULBs are financially constrained in Northeast, it is from Northeast, uh, with very limited revenue resource. Uh, the government needs to open private players to manage CND waste, but it is not financially feasible, uh, then private players back out. So what is the way forward in such scenario? It's kind of, uh, for small states and not with the, those problems are definitely there. Yeah. To ensure buyback, it's financially viable. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the question is, is are, do we have Indian suppliers for the processing machinery for this CND waste recycling facility? Do we have Indian suppliers? Yeah, or no, we are no, still most, relying? Yeah, no, yeah, most of the machinery is now in, uh, Indian. Okay. We have started from a crushing plant, then improve with some technology and technological improvement now all available in, in India. Okay. And there's a question on, is there a technical document uh, uh, where the technical steps for segregation of CND waste is mentioned? I think it's there in our rule. Uh, is it, rule. Uh, it's only rules, it is there. It is there in the rule. So, se se yes. Segregation at the processing plant can also be done. It's not a major, this thing is a garbage. So we, we have to segregate in two or three parts. Yeah. It's a, mainly a brick and combo, mix and concrete. 
for hmm. recycle concrete aggregate we have to segregate the concrete otherwise we need not to segregate and steel plastic and other things we are not getting in the waste so what uh, soil and soil and sand we are segregating hmm. so there is another comment uh, from uh, mr sanif tiwari he is saying that cnb being, being heavy in nature the cnb waste it costs too much for transportation and that could be the reason why near the land if there is a nearby landfill site people dump it there rather than taking it to the recycling plant so uh, that's just his uh, uh, comment on that is a master planning yeah. we have to do the master planning in such a way that we should have a, at regular intervals the spaces for the cnd waste Mm -hmm. So, uh, Professor Parai, uh, in terms of the recycling of the aggregate, so there is so much problem with the sand in the country right now. So, how feasible it will be? Can we recover sand as well from our old concrete uh, and uh, and use it? Uh, okay. So, I think the uh, sand is definitely the natural river sand is a most important ingredient in uh, creating the quality concrete. And uh, not much of a deeper insight is going from a fine aggregate point of view from recycle aggregate because of multiple reasons. Because the, the, the coarse aggregate, which is adhered by the mortar and the sand, which is the old one, processing it and extracting from there or using those material into that is always a very challenging thing in, in terms of a fine aggregate. So uh, there are different ways of doing it rather than going for uh, using them in, uh, as a replacement, but one can explore some of the other waste material coming out from industry. So mm -hmm. different kinds of maybe the fly ash or maybe the slag or any other things which comes out. Those are the best way could be that because go going to to make it the the fine aggregate is going to be challenging. I don't know, Mr. Khandelwal can tell. I think mostly the plant does the coarse aggregate only. No, 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 no. We are getting fine aggregate, and that is. I mean, uh, the uh, uh, disposal of fine aggregate is much faster than uh, the coarse aggregate. Okay, but that and is the quality of the fine aggregate is very good, even better than uh, this thing. Uh, 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 this natural okay. side. The silt content is controlled. Okay. So then we have a couple of uh, comments and questions from uh, Mr. Lakshmi Raghupati. Uh, he is that he wants the CNT waste uh, capacity to increase in, in Delhi because he finds the uh, waste is still there in Sastri Park area <laughs> and, and the lot of CNT waste is still lying on the road. So I can yeah, I, we, we see the Delhi every day is getting bigger and bigger. So it's uh, those things are uh, the issues are there. So uh, that's uh, of course he has some uh, comments on that. And then there was one question in the chat, which uh, I'm trying to find it. Uh, uh, it was, yeah, it was on the research being done at IIT Madras, uh, where they are uh, process, recycle aggregate is by processing using the solar energy, and then that is uh, getting the good strength. So they are talking about how far it is practically feasible. So, uh, and uh, what is the cost involved? So, Professor Barai, are you aware of uh, this particular work from IT Metras? Uh, oh. They are using some solar energy uh, for. Oh, yeah, some, that uh, is that is actually it, it. It is just a recently. Uh, the, it was basically to uh, kind of process the the concrete, which are to kind of uh, uh, demolished, and then then they are having the aggregate. So the thermal treatment, basically. Yeah. They are using the, the the solar panels. Solar as the energy yeah. for them. So it's a basically a treatment purpose. They are using it. Mm -hmm. They are not using for the fragmentation purpose, but they are using for treatment purpose. And I think it was a I think Brahma Kumari some setup they have, and in that they have set up the whole this. Uh, so it's a, in, using the energy very efficiently for treatment of the aggregates because that is one of the issues which people are raising about the contaminations and other things. The one could be the thermal treatment is one way of kind of taking care of that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's Professor Ravinder uh, get to his lab, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, no, it is, yeah. it is. Uh, uh, I think some, some different. Okay, okay. Yeah. So then uh, Mr. Rahul Dattar has a comment that uh, possibly decentralized approach is better than the centralized approach on, uh, to deal with uh, CND waste. So I think, yeah, we did uh, answer all the questions uh, which is there. And uh, I think, uh, 
yeah, and other questions were already taken care of in the live. Uh, uh, while Professor Bare mostly answered those. So yeah, but I think uh, we are on time as well. So it's uh, in one hour we did finish, and uh, so. Uh, again, thank you. I think uh, Akansha, you can take over. And thank you, no, no. Jack. Before that, I, I I can answer that question with the Delhi is increasing the capacity from 2009. We were only 500 TPD we were processing, and in 2021 we have reached to 5,550. And as and when the land will be made available, we will try to increase, increase the capacity. <laughs> and I think we need to we need to replicate that Delhi good example to all over India. To really make that one percent go to higher numbers, <laughs> I am pursuing with all the local bodies and other those things yeah. that it should they should take up the issue. Uh, yeah, I just Bhai wanted to correct seen. myself, uh, Professor Dubey. That he, uh, yeah, it is Professor Ravindra Getu's lab. They are looking mm -hmm. for thermomechanical uh, beneficiation of the uh, okay. concrete okay. Uh, waste, and that okay. for that they are using these large reflectors and the thermal energy. Mm -hmm. so it's, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that group actually is working for high quality recycled concrete aggregates. Okay. Yeah, so Akansha. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Dube, Dr. Burai, and uh, Mr. Kandelwal for your uh, very value power packed interaction. And I can see there have been so many queries and so much interaction that we can see from the attendees. So thank you so much to all the attendees. And um, I would like to say again uh, for uh, sharing your knowledge and experience to all the speakers and to our moderator, Dr. Dubey. Thank you so much for taking time out. And as I mentioned, this webinar will be recorded and will be available on our website and also on our YouTube channel. So all of us, are, whoever want to have any, uh, you know, PPTs, that I can see there have been some queries on the PPTs and the presentation, so they can go back to the recording and see and have uh, the in detail information on that. Uh, to stay updated on the future events, please subscribe to our newsletter and to our social media. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And um, we see you again, Dr. Dubai, Dubai, again for another session with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mr. Andrew. Bye-bye. Thank you.